Mapping in DD Race is hard, and there aren't many clear and concise tutorials that can get you started properly in less than 10 minutes. So here we go. This video is separated in four sections. Setup, tile placement, how to test, and general mapping tips. Timestamps will be in the description. First, we have to adjust the size of the map. You have no real way of knowing how big your map will be, so I suggest setting it to a huge number like 500 by 500 and mapping from up left to down right so you can scale back in the end if you need to. We need to figure out which tile set we'll be using. DD Race Network comes with a ton of pre-made tiles, so just use those if it's your first map. We are currently in the Layers section. Click that to switch to the Images section. Press Add to browse through DDNest default tiles. I like Grass Main, so I'll select that one. Then, it's really important for you to right-click it and press Embed. It will move it to the Embedded section, and people will be able to actually see the textures when playing your map. I suggest also grabbing Basic Freeze, DDNet tiles, and generic unhookables for now. Some will embed automatically, but make sure that all of them actually are. This is a bit of a slow process, but setting up your layers beforehand is really important. Here's a template you can follow that I learned from the player AoE. Game tab first, followed by front layer, tele layer, and speed up layer. Then create a bunch of tile layers and name them like so. Freeze, teleport, corners, unhook, unfreeze, hook through, hook, and etc. Feel free to add more layers as you see fit. You might need a deep freeze layer for example. Now we need to assign the images we selected earlier and attach them to their respective layers. Then put details on yes and now you can tweak certain properties about the image, most notably their color and opacity. Here's a few tips to make your images fit with their purpose. For freeze, use basic freeze. Put the values for red, green, and blue down to zero, and lower its opacity to 175. For teleport, you can decide. I'll use DDNet tiles and put all color values to zero. Corners need to be the exact same as freeze, so basic freeze, triple zero, and 175 for opacity. For unhook, we'll use generic unhookables and leave it at that. Unfreeze, we use basic freeze, RGB to zero, and opacity all the way down to 55. Hook through, I'm gonna take generic unhookables and lower the opacity to 175. Hook will be grass main. You might also notice that certain layers have specific properties hidden in the top section of the editor. The teleport, speed up, and switch layers all require you to fiddle with these options. All right, so the layers are set up. We're almost ready to start mapping. Before we place a block, you need to be aware that the edges of the map repeat themselves infinitely. So either put in a block that seamlessly loops into itself from all sides, or leave a gap. Now we can finally place some blocks. Unless you sketched out your map on paper beforehand, I suggest using a very paint-like approach to making your terrain. I'll select the hook layer, right-click to clear out my current selection, hold space, select the plain dirt, and start painting away. You can right click at any point to clear out your currently selected block and then press left click and drag to select multiple blocks. This also works while selecting the tile from the set. If you want to rotate your tile, use T and you can also mirror the tile using N. If you're using this grass, there's a nifty thing called auto map which will automatically add the appropriate corners to the side of your platforms. To enable it, click on auto rule select the type of terrain you want, and then press auto map. This doesn't work for every tile set, however. What is a thing for most layers is the game tiles button here. In the case of hook, we want to click this and select hookable. This will add the hookable property to every single tile you've placed. You can view and edit those properties in the game tab. This feature is also why we want a separate layer called corners. When we add freeze tiles, we can use the Game Tiles button and press Freeze. But to make the freeze look smoother, I usually add corners and blocks inside other blocks. That will go a long way in making your freeze look way better. Now before we go test the map, make sure you have a spawn tile and a start tile. You can do that by selecting the Game tab, holding space, and selecting the appropriate tiles. Now that you know how to place blocks, you need to be able to test your map. To do this, you need to start your own server. Luckily, DDNet provides the files needed to make one. If you're using the Steam version, 
right click the game, select properties, local files and browse. Go into the ddnet folder and start up ddnet server. Now you can open up your game, save your map alongside the other maps, press escape, go in the browser, LAN, and you should see your server right there. By default, it will load the map sunny side up. To change this, you need admin privileges. In this game, this is called Archon. To access the Archon console, press F2. It will ask you a password. By default, this is Archon. Now you can use the command change map and add the name of your map afterwards to load it. And that's all there is to it. Now, the map won't automatically update when you make changes to it. In order to test your changes, you need to press F2 and write reload. This menu is also where you can write admin commands such as super, unsuper, and all directions. If you want to test your map with your friends, go back to the folder containing the server and make a copy of the file autoexec-server.cfg. Name the copy myserverconfig.cfg. The capital S is important. Open it with Notepad or any text editor and tweak these options. Set up a name for your server, change the Archon password, and set SV register to 1. I also suggest adding a server password. Now the next part can be a little confusing if you're not too tech savvy. You need to port forward port 8303. You can easily learn how to port forward by googling something like how to port forward with uh, your internet service provider. It only takes about one minute to do once you know how. When mapping, you need to keep a few things in mind that can be easily forgotten, especially if it's your first map. Number one, make your parts breathe. Maps generally feel way more fun when you can move around. Tight corridors can end up feeling claustrophobic. Number two, add a way for the people not doing the part to get out of the way. This can be done by adding a hookable roof or with an elevated platform. Number three, Think of a difficulty goal, like moderate 2, and don't do tricks that exceed one level over your intended goal. You can browse levels of that difficulty to get inspired and get a feel for how hard your map should be. If you have specific questions, ask them in the comments, and me and others can try helping you out. I'll add a frequently asked questions section in the description as certain comments get answers. 